Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Wandering Road Podcast. I'm your host Chris, alongside my co-host Dean, and for today's show, we're going to be tackling the concept of a time slip, and what specifically a time slip is, and go into some experiences and stories that people have shared about experiencing a time slip. Hey, man. How are you doing today, bud? I get in there. How about yourself? I'm excited for this one because I'm always I've always been a fan of the concept of time travel and, you know, slipping through different parts of time. You know, you ever seen that in movies where someone's like walking down the street and then all of a sudden something happens and they're in like a different time period, whether it was you know, by accident, or they had some sort of device that allowed them to shift over. So I've always been intrigued about that stuff. What about you? I I have to say that over the years, I haven't come across very many examples um, of such things happening. I mean, usually you hear about way more popular pseudo conspiracies like UFOs and cryptids and stuff like that. So time slips a little bit outside of my awareness zone, but I do know some stories and I I have heard them. You probably know more than me, but I, that's why actually why I'm excited to talk about this because it is an interesting concept and it does kind of like dabble in like space time and science. And you can kind of like use science as a way to guide the discussion. So I think that's why this might be a a really interesting conversation. Do you want to talk about the definition of, of a time slip in general and what what examples have you come across that are most interesting to you? So for folks that don't know what a time slip is, so by definition, it's a phenomenon or experience in which a person perceives themselves as briefly transported to a different time period while remaining physically in the present. So basically, for example, you're walking down the street. Let's say we're in New York City, right? Where it's New York City, we're in Times Square, it's September 1st, 2023. We walk into a store, we walk back out, and we look around and everybody's dressed like they're in the 1950s along with the cars and everything. So that's what a time slip is. It's one of those type of experiences where as an individual, if you experience a time slip, you're like transported to a different time, but you're there, but at the same time, you're still in your time period if that makes sense to make to make it more convoluted. So almost kind of like almost in a bubble, so to speak, or whatever thing is appearing in your time uh, frame or your time reference in that given moment is is itself within a bubble from its own time. Right. Pre- pretty much. Yeah, that that's how I understand it. And that's how it seems to be explained when you look up the definition and you pull up like the chat DPT, GPT definition and just Googling it in general or, you know, looking up videos on youtube which i will say they are very hard to come by there are like no documentaries on time slips which i found to be kind of shocking and amazing (laughs) at the same time but there are tons and tons of experiences that people had that they claim that they experienced the time slip and you know one thing i'll say that uh, you, you kind of brought to the surface is i always have to wonder like when things when information isn't shared or isn't readily available or popular in, in open media to me that kind of screams like maybe that's one of the things that are trying to be kept from other you know from the populace population more than others so like more than ufos so but anyway that's my little just tinfoil hat for a second there. But, you know, we were talking before we got on and you were saying that you had a really super interesting and kind of recent example about a couple of people who claim to be transported back in time to uh, like the Roman era. And do you want to talk about that? This incident, it's not that recent. It's from the 1950s, but you could still say it's, you know, kind of like in our modern context right uh this one is referred to as the roman legion time slip so in the 1950s a couple claimed that they experienced a time slip while visiting the city of york in the uk so according to their account they were walking near the york minister 
which is a historical cathedral, when they say they suddenly found themselves transported back to a time that appeared like ancient Roman York. And the reason they came to that conclusion is because as they look around and they see their the entire city change from a modern city to what was their standards to this ancient looking city. And they said that their street transformed into a bustling Roman street with soldiers in armor, in period clothing, and there was even a market going on. Unfortunately, the couple said they were unable to interact with the people that they saw and the experience only lasted for a few minutes oh man after that yeah after that they found themselves back in the present day near the york minister but it's one of those things where you have to ask were they hallucinating was it like a group hallucination you know yeah but this case is one of my favorites one because it involves ancient rome But as we can see, which you'll find with other time slip examples, it's not that someone slips into a different time period for like an entire day. Mm. It's very, very rapid. Yeah. So it's a very short amount of time. So you're talking about a matter of minutes. So no orgy. All of this happens. No orgy. No, no, no orgy. Like in the (laughs) Simpsons should have went to more orgies. (laughs) (laughs) But what do you make of that story? Well, since I, I actually wasn't uh, aware that it was uh, in the 1950s, that's a pretty long time ago. So, I mean, so hard to verify. And if you're talking about they had a story where, I mean, you're talking about people who are probably dead by now. And they have this story that they claimed, you know, their their experience only happened for a matter of minutes. So, I mean, I there's like no, I feel like there's no viability to that unless maybe you did some more digging and found out that the people who made the claim had no knowledge or awareness of ancient Rome, or maybe if they said something about what they were seeing that wasn't typically known at that time, historically about Romans. And then, you know, like say we came, came to find out like two decades later that, Oh, some of the things they saw, they weren't in textbooks back then, but they are now that would give some validity to the story. Since you know so much about Rome and based off of what they said, what do you think about that story? Is there just so little information you can't make a decision about whether it's true or not? Or do you think that they might have touched on things that sound right to you? So this is hard to say because, again, it's you're just taking, you know, their word for it. Mm-hmm. So I I can't really say that I that I believe them. I want to believe them for the sake of what we're talking about. Right. Because it's it makes it that much more interesting. but. One thing I would ask, which I always ask, is in that time period, like what is going on during that time period? Like that's what caused someone to make this up. Because when you talk about the Roman Empire, it's kind of a given that most people in the Western world have a basic understanding of the Roman Empire and what it was through books, through school, through films. Now, I'm not sure what the education system was like back in the early 20th century, but I think Rome was still like at the top tier of civilizations and and Mm. revered, which it still is today. So one can probably honest can safely say that they probably had some idea of what Rome was and what things look like. Yeah. But if they started describing like a market happening in a specific area and then 30 years later they're doing some excavations and then they're like oh crap they found a market here so i think that's Mm -hmm. one of the things that would make it valid yeah but it's really hard to say and you know what real quick there's i mean i i I say we move on from because i totally agree with you there's no way to know for sure based off of the limited information but one thing that popped into my head while you're talking is when these time slips happen, it almost seems like, I mean, you know, in like movies and 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 TV and, and uh, sci-fi uh, and whatnot, like whenever someone jumps back or forward in time or something like that happens, it's not necessarily portrayed as them going back in time, forward in time or something slipping into the current time in that exact spot. So like they sometimes they jump around in those movies. So like, you know, they might be in downtown Venice in one scene and then like something pops into their time from, you know, a hundred years ago in New York city. So, but the thing about 
the interesting thing is when the actual stories happen, the examples we have, it seems like they pop like the times the times that overlap, they still have the same geolocational point. So these people are claiming, you know, they they pop back to uh, you know, the, the the days of Rome in a market. And like you said, if they found out later that a marketplace really was held there in that exact point at some time in the past. That would give a lot of validity to the story, but it seems like such a thing is more likely scientifically because it doesn't make sense for someone or something or some event to just pop not only from a different time, but from a different location. So th- I think that's the next thing I kind of want to touch on is the scientific a- aspect. And one thing that always fascinated me about space time, ever since I learned about this, I think I, I came across this knowledge like maybe like a decade ago. So I didn't always, you know, it's not something that's taught in the classroom and it's not something that everyone is immediately aware of, although it might be obvious. So it it might be interesting to the listeners. So if you're, if you picture us on the planet earth, all the things that have have happened to humans have taken place, you know, with the exception of, of people leaving to go to the moon and stuff, everything has happened on this globe that is affixed by gravity, gravitational pull, but it's not just the fixed location of gravity. We are also expanding with the rest of the universe moving through space. So that's what always just like blew my mind is like you can stay like you and I are sitting in chairs right now and you could say that on this planet, we are officially stationary. You know, we're not moving out of the chair. We're not going upstairs, downstairs, outside, left, right, up, down, whatever. However, while we were on this planet fixed in this position by gravity, we, along with the entire globe, are moving through space at like, I don't even know how fast, like 5,000 miles per hour, per hour or something. So that means that the, the exact point in space time that was existing 5,000 years ago is completely and utterly different from what it is today. So that implies that any time slips that happen when the past bleeds into the future, geolocationally the same, that means that that different space time is irrelevant. So the fact that it you know 5000 years ago we were a different point in space doesn't matter. What matters apparently is that the same space is still occupied by the gravitational waves on earth here. So that leads me to wonder if there are time slips are they inherently I said it <laughs> are they held to the same uh, characteristics that we understand gravity to be, you know, as a, as a key component for that. Have you ever seen those, those animations of the uh, solar system moving through space? They're so interesting. If you, if you have a, a chance to Google that, anybody listening, I, re- I highly recommend look up the GIF or the GIF or whatever of our solar system, how it moves through space, because what it looks like is the sun is in the center. And if you track the lines of movement after every, say, day or so, it looks like a corkscrew. So everything moving forward is like a big like a big whirlpool or a corkscrew moving through space in one direction. And I just thought that that was like mind blowing that every single space and time is always different from the last place we occupied. However, the current space we're in now affixed by gravity is the same. So do you have any thoughts on that kind of rabbit hole that I just went down? No. Sorry, everyone. Nerd city here. (laughs) No, what I did think about was this will probably deviate away from the time slips, but we don't have to go into great detail. Just the concept of time. Is it all happening at the same time? If you you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All everything is happening all at once. It's yeah. not that. Yes, there is the past, the present, the future, but they're all happening at the same time. Hence mm. why there are these time slips due to these specific placements and these right I don't know. I'm just talking about out of my ass. No, these like gravitational pulls or I think that's whatever. I think that's brilliant, man. Actually, that that you brought that up because I didn't even think about that. And that that has some scientific weight to it, because I think one of the uh, arguments of string theory and like subatomic calculus and um, or not calculus. Sorry, I'm uh, having a brain toot like subatomic science and stuff like that. And string theory, it has to do with the idea that subatomic particles. And in fact, you could argue maybe all particles are, like you said, inextricably linked to each other at any given time. So anything that happens to one linked particle on the other side of the universe has an instantaneous effect on the one that's the opposite side of the universe from it. So that that to me says it's 
totally possible that everything is interconnected, including time. Maybe it's possible that some of those those subparticles, like you and I are made of particles right now, and we are going to be the same particles for at least, you know, I don't know, most particles are going to be the same in our body for the next like five, six years. So if those particles are linked to something else happening around us, I guess it is totally possible that there could be some reverberation or bleed over into another time that could pull us or move us or draw something in from another time. So I think, I, so I got to say, man, brilliant observation. I think that's totally, that adds some uh, credence to the the whole uh, scientific argument of how time might all be existing at once. And we might just be experiencing the flow of time because that's how our brains are set up. Yeah, it, because it reminds me of the Avengers Endgame, the way they describe time travel. They go back in time, but anytime they do that, it's not the same timeline. It just branches off into different timelines, right. thus creating a new timeline type of thing. Yep. But yeah, that we'll we'll keep time travel for uh, another episode. Yeah. But what's interesting is with this whole time slip stuff, I was watching a show called Paranormal Caught on Camera. And I don't know if you ever watched it, but if you have Discovery Plus, it's on there. And they don't just talk about, you know, ghosts and stuff like that. They talk about cryptids and like time slips and whatnot. And one of the interesting things that I saw was one of the stories was that some guy was hiking and he had a GoPro with him uh, just recording his hike. And if you look up into the sky, what pops up out of nowhere, out of thin air, because it's not cloudy or anything, it's clear blue skies out of thin air, what looks to be a pterodactyl pops up randomly and it flies for a few feet and then it just disappears. So that I, I found that to be really interesting. And that's kind of what got me into looking into time slips because it's like, oh, wow, does that does this happen often? Yeah, no one's around <laughs> like to see it. Like how common is Yeah, and no one's around to see it. And this guy actually caught it on camera. And it's like, oh, well, clearly there are no fucking pterodactyls around. <laughs> and for something to just appear out of thin air and disappear out of th disappear into thin air. I think that's another thing. Like th we actually have that on camera. Yeah. Someone actually recorded that on a hike. Yeah. But what I did want to segue into is another time slip experience called this one is called the Versailles time slip. The background on this is that in August of 1901, Charlotte and Moberly and Eleanor Jourdain, both academics and educators, were visiting the Palace of Versailles in France. So basically, they were on a sightseeing trip on their vacation, and they went to the Versailles Gardens. So they followed uh, a path that led them to, I'm going to call it the Queen's Hamlet, because I don't want to butcher the French name. <laughs> And <laughs> they say during their walk, for some reason, they began to experience a growing sense of unease and disorientation. They said that they noticed the atmosphere around them seemed unusual and unfamiliar, and that they encountered people dressed in clothing that appeared to be out of place. They said they observed a woman shaking out a white cloth out a window children playing, and various figures in period clothing. Most notably, they said they saw Queen Marie Antoinette sketching near the Petit Trinon. I apologize to any French people listening to this. This is a really bad pronunciation. All of our one, all of our one French. <laughs> one it. and a half French. I would have never listened to them again. <laughs> them Americans. Um, <laughs> they said that this was highly unusual because clearly Marie Antoinette had lived in the late 18th century and these two folks were in the early 20th century. Yeah. After they had that experience, being academics, they tried to make sense of what happened, and they concluded that they unintentionally slipped back into time and witnessed a scene from the late 18th century. Mm. And they concluded that their experience was a form of time travel, which they refer to as a time slip or an adventure. And they documented their experience in a book called An Adventure, which was published oh. in 1911. <laughs> Under the pseudonyms Elizabeth Morrison and Francis Lamont. God damn it. 
red flag a <laughs> red flag right you were right. Draw, you were drawing me in for a second my first my first <laughs> <laughs> my first inclination was okay well that's really cool that sounds like it could have happened except for the fact that no one actually had a picture of marie antoinette because it was probably 200 years before the uh the first camera was ever invented or the first photograph was ever taken so how could they immediately be so sure that they were seeing Marie Antoinette. And then the other thing I could say is if you wanted to solve that puzzle or at least like increase your chances of figuring out if it was true or not, all you'd have to do is see uh, if Marie Antoinette was a painter. And even if she was a painter, you could probably theoretically figure out what what she would have been looking at to paint. So if you like, let's say like, let's say that you found a painting after the fact that this happened that no one knew, knew about, maybe it was in someone's like basement or something. They found a painting that was likely created by uh, Marie Antoinette and that it actually happened to have the point of view that she would have likely been, have been painting that these women saw her facing in, the, in that direction at the time. So that's another uh, thought that I have. But then once you said that they wrote their own book on this adventure, as they called it, that just to me sounds like they completely were just trying to make some kind of fictitious story and get sales for the book. So I'm sorry to say that I give that, I would probably give that one less credence than the the Roman one. What about you? Yeah, I'm of the same mind. It was all flowing so well until <laughs> until they the wrote book. a book yeah until they wrote a book and made a million dollars yeah made a million dollars over it <laughs> they won what they 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 said they won what the hell did they win oh, i guess they didn't win anything <laughs> <laughs> all for nothing yeah but they still documented their their experience. You know, I will say that I, I'm not, I know we've been shitting on the examples that we've, or the uh, cases that we've talked about so far. Maybe that is why, like, you know, there aren't so many stories that come out that we see about, about time slips and whatnot. And I'm thinking back to the one you were saying recently, the pterodactyl one that showed up on the GoPro. I, I mean, like we talked about this in past podcasts, but like we're reaching a point in our society and our technological capabilities as, as a civilization to where like, you can't like, I mean, for, for crying out loud, we have movies that are like three, three D movies that you can't distinguish the difference between what is actually being filmed in real life versus what is being created by a green screen and CGI. And, you know, imagine 10 years from now with the integration of artificial intelligence into creating, um, you know, videos and stuff like that, there's going to be absolutely no way to tell if even the person you're looking at and listening to who seems like a real person, like say on the news is an actual person talking. So like we officially have crossed it over the threshold to say that we can't believe anyone's story anymore for someone to come forward and say, Oh, I captured a pterodactyl flying in front of me. And that is proof of a time slip. We reached a point in our society and technological advancement at like right now to say like there's th like the video adds zero argument for you because it could easily be faked by probably the most simple program on your computer. It might take some time for a regular person to do that. You know, it's totally feasible that it, it could have been fabricated. So I think I think the only way that time slips are going to become more provable as a thing is if multiple people report them across multiple devices or multiple video captures. But you, you notice that every time someone captures these events, it's always one person or like one small group of people. There's no one to verify. Um, that's an interesting thing we should look up real quick. I, I wonder if there are any like large examples of multiple people claiming that they came across some kind of time slip or some kind of event because that that to me would give way more credibility to such a thing as opposed to the stories we read about with like one or two people claiming them and yeah with the examples that we discussed those two examples with um with the roman stuff and the stuff going back to late 18th century france on the royal grounds of the palace of Versailles. It's one of those things where you as a reader or someone that's interested in this type of stuff like we are, yeah, you desperately want to believe it. I mean, I sure as hell do. I love the idea and the concept of, of time slips. But the one thing that we always come back to, it is so hard to verify because, you know, with ghost stories and with cryptid encounters, you know, like we were just the last episode that we just did where we were talking about the Mothman. You're just taking people's word off of 
what they're seeing. So I, I think that's what makes this so difficult, yeah. but yet so interesting at the same time. Yeah. Just as an aside, though, for example, Mothman, one that we talked about, that did have a lot of people, separate people who did give stories and uh, encounters and uh, interactions with all the events surrounding the story of the Mothman over the course of that year, the 1967 and 1968. And that is probably a more viable, valid argument for for something strange happening as opposed to like one or two people proposing like a time slip actually happened. I will say though that even though I doubt a lot of stories about the time slips that we've seen so far, I still think that scientifically it is well within the realm of possible. Just because like we were just saying that time is linear to us, but time doesn't necessarily have to be linear to every single layer or dimension that exists. And and in fact, if you if you compile every single layer that is in a, you know touching touching every other layer through the space time continuum and and through multiple strings of of uh, particle connections and whatever then you really get to this idea that everything has already happened and anything anything that will happen has already happened in the past and vice versa and it's totally possible that it could bleed over into what we perceive in our space time as as you know temporal as moving forward in time so, I mean, that's the broader discussion about time. I, I won't go, I, I promise I won't go back to that again, but I think that's like, that's the thing that I get gravitated towards the most when we talk about this time slip thing is I think it's totally possible, but I think that the universe is probably very well structured to where such a thing is so infrequent that it probably won't happen very often, but who knows going in the future, like going forward in the future, maybe it becomes more frequent for whatever reason. Yeah, I, I understand that perspective. Well, one thing I do want to ask you, what makes something like the Mothman sightings or Bigfoot sightings more valid than people that have these experiences? Because we've only discussed two of them, but we've come across like quite a few of these time slip yeah. experiences yeah. in which if you break it down, they tend to have some similarities in the sense that it only happens, the experience only lasts for a few minutes. They can't interact with anybody that they see. It's kind of like they're in a situation where you ever seen in those movies where someone is transported somewhere and they're trying to, they're like, hey, can anybody hear me? Yada, yada, yada. And everyone's just continuing to do whatever the hell they're doing right. around them like they don't exist. Um, that's That's where we have some similarities. And there's quite a few of them that, you know, they they get transported back to like the 1940s, the 1950s right. uh, type of stuff. But you may not have the answer to this, but just a general question. When it comes to the whole concept of time slips and time travel, why do you think we're so hesitant to believe people that say that they have experienced such a thing? As opposed to someone that says they they've seen fucking dog man. <laughs> I, I I don't think uh, well my answer probably won't be liked by many people, but I think that it's because for the same reason that we have the Marvel universe and all kinds of other movies and sci-fi that is so popular, it's because people like to see things and experience things that are totally different from their daily uh, experience, their daily lives. So I think that the idea of seeing some creature that is not something that, that humans are taught exists or that we've ever seen before is way more interesting than this idea that we go back or forwards in time to something that has already happened. So it might, it might be just a, a, a a portion of that might be just be it might just be um how much people find that interesting and how much people really want to talk about it but on the flip side like i said earlier it is strange like you said that such a concept isn't as prevalent or more it should it should theoretically be more prevalent because it still is interesting and it's still definitely possible so maybe there is something to the idea that um there's some conspiracy around why it's not more prevalent. Maybe, you know, some somebody or something or someone trying to keep it suppressed or whatever. I think that's that's, you know, it's plausible. But I will say that there are aspects to, to time slips that, like I said earlier, like quantum mechanics and particle entanglement and stuff like that that just adds so much validity to the possibility as opposed to saying 
you know, oh, I don't know, like Bigfoot, you know, Bigfoot. Well, now Bigfoot's a bad example because Bigfoot is probably a hominid if he exists. And he probably, it probably stemmed off from humans through evolution, but something like Mothman or Dogman or something or Sheep or Goatman or whatever, like that is more, I think that's more, that has less credence and, and less tie to any ty- type of scientific argument. It's it, it's so strange to talk about this because time slips to me, even though we've torn holes in a lot of the ones we talked about, I think I'm more readily accepting two time slips being being a possibility than I am to say like Dogman or Goatman. What about you? Do you do you think that like just based off of the science we touched on and and thinking about that aspect, do you think that there's more possibility based off of that, or do you think it's about the same as all the other ones, all the other pseudoscience uh, theories and conspiracies? I think it's probably more possible because it's something that science can probably answer at some point in the future. Oh, sure. No doubt. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Science can't tell us anything about Mothman or Bigfoot or Dogman or the skunk ape or whatever the hell. Unless we had them in a cage or something. Uh, Exactly. Exactly. But with science, if we get to a point where our technology allows us to mess around with this type of stuff, where you could take, I don't know, like an object and strap a camera on it and put it in some enclosed chamber and then initiate a time slip, purposefully initiate a time slip and record everything around it. Yeah. We probably can't do that now. Right. But. Who's to say that that's something that we can't do in the future, you know? So I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, probably most people aren't aware of this, but it, it's something that that's placed into the media. There was a news story probably like over five, maybe even 10 years ago. But there is a scientific study conducted by the United States. I don't know if it's uh, bilateral or unilateral. I don't, or, you know, I don't know if they have like, I don't know if it's just the US or if there's other countries involved, but apparently there is is a facility, I think in Alaska, and it's designed to test and measure the capture of some kind of subatomic particle. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe I can look it up while, while we're talking about other things later. But essentially, the, the particle that I'm talking about that, that they're studying is one that can get through any type of material. It can, it can, like, even if you have like a lead encased airtight container these particles still pass through them unimpeded. And I think what they're trying to study is how these particles play into the space-time continuum and how that affects our movement through space and how much of an effect these particles have on on the energy that that passes through, say, like a light particle or a photon or something like that 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 comes in contact with our planet. However, the, the conspiracy theory with that is they actually have some kind of way to measure entry points and exit points into moving forward and backwards in time. So it's not just measuring, it's also calculating how to harness these particles in order to shift time around it. And that is just my, the, the, the latter half of that that I just talked about is, is completely tinfoil hat. I'm not saying I believe it. I don't, I don't know if it's true or not, but that's just a conspiracy that's out there. And the particles themselves are real. The study is real. But I think that, that there is totally, I mean, there has to be. The, the, government, the governments of the world, the scientists of the world who have uh, like unlimited amounts of money and have like multiple layers of security and coverage to keep this from the the regular population there's no doubt in my mind that they are studying moving forward and backwards in time and, and how to take advantage of of so-called time slips it's funny cuz you say you're interested and fascinated by time slips to me they're terrifying because if you can really find a way to get into our timeline earlier or in the future then you can drastically alter things you know, honestly, like if you if you think about the the theory right now, you and I could have theoretically popped into existence 30 minutes ago with all of our thoughts, all of our form, everything around us, all of our memories, whatever you want to say, our loved ones could have all been injected into our mind 30 minutes ago, and we would have no fucking clue <laughs> that we were just created 30 minutes or 30 seconds ago. So that's why time slips terrify me. Have you ever heard of anything like scientifically that like studies that that might be that might create some fear or uncertainty for you? I can't say that I have, 
in doing our preparation for today's episode, anytime I would Google time slip or look into anything regarding time slips, it's one or two avenues that you go down. Well, that is provided to you. This is, you know, a fictional plot for story writing. This is a fi- fictional type of thing that people use to write stories, or they provide you a list of time slips that have happened to people. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't to me it doesn't seem like there's there's any type of in between when it comes to this specific topic. I think I would I would say too that if you had someone who experienced a time slip, I wonder if most people would even talk about it because you know if if it had something within their favor, like if they well first of all if if it was a, if it was a slip from previous time into modern time. They probably wouldn't get much from it other than some media attention and possible sales of books if they were good at writing or something like that. So I would say that this is this is probably a good example of how way more stories of this could could be out there than are being told because people who may think that they have experienced it are just keeping quiet about it. But I will say I have to wonder the stories, if there are any stories where people experience time slips from the future. Because because if we're talking about time being linear from our perspective, but but truly being interconnected and everything already being in existence on multiple layers of the universe or multiverse, then it's it's possible and even likely that if time slips are real, someone someone should have experienced time slips into the future. And if that was the case, um, I have to wonder like examples of people winning the lot. You know, like like there are people, there are some people who have been so fortunate in so many regards that it's just absolutely mind boggling and and actually really like raises a red flag and very confusing that they they had so many positive things happen to them based off of decisions they made like someone like for example someone who who there have been cases of people who go out and buy lottery tickets and and win the lottery like five times in a row or something like that and and they went from being you know working a 9 to 5 not really having a lot of resources or, or finance financial support or whatever to suddenly being able to retire and being a multimillionaire. And and they have no indication that they had any insight to picking the numbers or any technical knowledge of how to calculate the probability of picking certain numbers. Like they're just normal people. So I have to wonder it, how many, because you never, I don't think you really even, you don't really hear about stories about people slipping forward in time, time slipping back into our present time. And I imagine that'd be hard to explain, but you know, there would be stories about people talking like, oh, there I saw zipping, I saw cars flying around, like vehicles flying around in the sky. And I saw all kinds of crazy different types of robots or whatever you want to theorize for what the future is going to look like. You don't hear those stories very often. It's always, it's always the past coming into the future. So I have to wonder if we would even hear about cases of people slipping into the future because it might say be beneficial to them for for financial gain or 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 maybe they just don't want to be pointed out as crazy. Have you ever come across anybody talking about slipping into the future or being from the future? Like you mentioned, a lot of the stories seem to be folks going backward in time. And what I did want to talk about as this will probably be our last encounter when it comes to time slips. This case is about a Ukrainian time traveler, and it circles around a guy that turns up in Kiev, Ukraine in 2006, claiming to be from years in the past. And he told authorities when when they approached him, he was born from 1932. The guy looked the part, he had the proper clothing, and he had an old-fashioned camera with him as well. And what was interesting is that this guy, he had documentation on his person that said, you know, it was Soviet documentation showing that he was from the Ukraine, which was part of the USSR at the time in the 1950s, and showed that he was 25 years old. And I think his name was Sergei Panomarenko. So essentially... When they checked out his paperwork and everything like that, it all checked out. It was all valid and it was all legitimate. So that's where we have one of those cases back in 2006 of this guy just slipping through time. Have you ever heard of that story? No. And um, I think that's probably the most, uh, the 
the the best story with some valid, validity to it because I mean if you're talking about someone who's carrying documentation and actual paraphernalia and goods from the time period he, he, time period he claimed to be from he would he would have to have some very very intricate knowledge like the historical way things worked back then for example like there are so few people like common people today even with open source research and stuff like that you, it, you'd probably be hard pressed to find the average person capable of looking up and figuring out what period clothing and what material and what types of cameras, like, you know, all the technology that would make sense that they would be carrying from that day. It seems very unlikely that the average person would be able to to do that research, not only do the research, but also get their hands on that sort of material. So I think that going, you know, if you're talking about what did you, what year did you say this happened in? This was in 2006. Okay. 2006. I mean, like that's, that's relatively modern, but also still like not too crazily recent. I, I still think that people would even be more hard pressed back then to do something like that. So if he showed up with the proper documentation, I think that it could still have been easily faked. Not easily, but it, it could have been faked, but not easily. So maybe there's a little bit extra validity to that story. But I will say that, you know, carbon dating did exist. So why not just take the material that he had to close the camera, the paper and attempt to carbon date it? And, and the only thing I could think of, maybe carbon dating wasn't as accurate. There's no way that they could have pinpointed material that was only 50 years older than it claimed to be. You know, if something like that were to happen today, I think we do have science and technology, like technological capability to measure and weigh things more accurately to say, oh yeah, this, that would be actually, to me, that would be like the golden goose egg for arguing that time slips are possible. If someone can show that some material that was being carried by a person multiple multiple sets of material it can't, if, if it was just one they could have just stolen it from you know some place some place and it actually was from the past but if they had multiple things on them maybe even themselves i wonder if you could could you i wonder if that that's interesting actually think about that for a second if you if you were someone who popped into the future from 100 years ago even in the matter of days you would still have plenty of time to do this before anything changes if anything changes just take one of their hair follicles, take one of their skin follicles or some scraping from their body or whatever, and then do some analysis. Because if they're made up of the components that came from their time period, which they would have been because that's where they came from, that's where they grew up in, that's where they got their sustenance from, that's where their genetic makeup was created, like the environment it was created in. So theoretically, if someone popped into the future 100 years, you could just take any part of their body or clothing and carbon date it, and it should show like, oh shit, this person, their genetic makeup and all their particles did come from 100 years ago. That would be the way to solve the problem, the question. And I I, I do wonder, because that's the thing, if, if anyone did pop into the future and claim they were in the future, if the government believed or knew that that was possible, or some entity in the world knew that was possible, who had unlimited resources, they would immediately scoop that person up and keep them from sharing their story. If someone came forward and said, oh, I was tested by so many we should do that. <laughs> we should go out and be like, oh yeah, we're from a hundred years ago. And if we get scooped up by some, you know, secret entity to do tests on us, then we get kicked loose because we were full of shit. Then we would know that they, <laughs> then we would know that they would know that this has happened before. They need to make sure that they don't keep this from happening. But then of course, if they had that technology, yeah. they'd probably just men in black our minds and wipe them fucking clean. And we would not know anyway. So I guess that's, right. that's futile. What's interesting is that the guy had the ID, authentic Soviet documentation. When they examined it, it was legitimate. And on top of that, he had a camera and they processed the photos. On one of the images of his roll of film was a blurry photo of a bell-shaped object hovering over the skies in 1950s Kiev. And according to this guy's story, that's when this whole thing happened. He took a picture of that and then he was transported the future Mm. it's similar to that nazi bell that ss bell that crashed in kecksburg pennsylvania if you remember that my grandfather actually was around at that time and he used to tell me stories about that yeah so that kind of like bell shaped type of object so uh sergey says he took a picture of that it was on his camera roll photographic expert Vadim posner couldn't find any irregularities with the images or the camera itself. A psychologist, Parlo Kuchikov, 
was called in to investigate the story and they couldn't find any holes in it. But the only issue is that like with all other time slips, there's no actual evidence that this guy came through time. This could have been a person that decided to get (laughs) some old documentation made and some old clothing because in 2006, you could do that. Those cameras are around. The, The technology was around to make fake IDs and stuff. And on top of that, Panomarenko himself disappears a few days after this incident well for fuck's sake (laughs) that can go either way (laughs) i mean like honestly i totally agree with you that anybody even though i said earlier that it would be difficult to fabricate something that complex but you know it is possible that you could do some research and have someone tailor a uniform and craft some id but you would have to know exactly what the id looked like exactly what the uniform looked like However, the camera to me is the red flag or not the red flag, but the the, the most significant part that gives validity, credibility to the story. Because you have a specialist who is a third party saying that, yes, I can't find anything wrong with these photos. They don't seem doctored. They do seem to be organically a part of the computer or the camera system that is from that time period. The only way to be sure, and also the fact that the guy disappeared two days later, the only way to be sure is to hire a private detective or somebody, some researcher to figure out who this guy really was, because I assume there are photos of him. I assume that you could probably trace back his name unless he was using a false name. You could go back and look. That's the other thing too. Go back and look at records. I mean, the time period he claimed to be from wasn't so far in the past, even though it was in a, in a, I'm sure there was some kind of documentation. I mean, if there were, if he claimed to have been, if he claimed to have a document that showed who he was from that time period, then that person must have been documented in that time period. You could argue that, yeah, the person who, who made this claim could have done research and found someone who matched that name and title, but, but there has to have been more layers of information available. So I would actually give this more likely than not to be possible because everything to me is just screaming the fact that this guy had his, has had a camera from that time period and photos that appeared to be old and the fact that he had documentation that could be traceable and he disappeared two days later. That to me is making the story slightly more probable as being likely than not. I don't know, man. What do you think about that? I think this is one of the stories that are more probable that this was legitimate, that this was real, because a couple of things, he was evaluated. Well, a psychologist was brought in to investigate the story and couldn't find any holes. And on top of that, you had a photographic expert that looked into the matter and said that, yeah, this is legitimate. And then you had the authorities that looked into the documentation that he had on his person and said, yeah, these are legitimate so this is legitimate soviet documentation from the 1950s i think this is one of those cases where yeah we might have had a real time slip but before we end for today i wanted to ask you the whole concept of time slips do you think they're valid or do you think majority of them are people just bullshitting for attention personally for me i think some are more valid than others. To me, the Roman one, I, I'd like to think that one's legitimate. The one with Versailles in France, to me, that one is eh, more lower on the scale just because they wrote a book about it and made money off of it. And this last one here with the, the man showing up from the 1950s and 2006 and having valid documentation, having photographs that were verified by an expert and a psychologist looking into the story and saying, yeah, we can't find any holes in it. And then a couple of days later, he just disappears. I think this one's more valid. So for me, the whole time slip thing, it falls into place with cryptids, I guess. Some of them, some stories are legitimate and some are bullshit, and it's up to us to weed out what's legit or not. I would say that it would only it only takes in every single case of everything we've ever talked about, it only takes one case of truth. And it doesn't matter, you know, it could be 99.9% of all the cases out there if there are that many cases to match up with that percentage. In like 99.9% of them could be false, but it would just take that 0.01% chance of being true or a 0.1% chance of being true. And that's that it to me like that's the story of what you just gave like the guy showing up with the papers or whatever like the most recent one that is all you need to say that time slips and cryptids or whatever are totally within the realm of possible and and even likely doesn't matter 
that there are like assholes and, and people who just give false stories and false misrepresentations about what they actually saw for attention or, or financial gain or whatever. I think that I am more inclined to believe time slips as being something that's possible because just because, as I said earlier in the podcast, there is a direct tie and argument to, you know, scientific theory and even scientific fact as we understand it today with how subatomic particles work and string theory and multiple layers of connections and frameworks have how quantum mechanics works and stuff like that. Like something we've never understood in the past as human beings, as far as we know. So I, I will say that, that I would give way more validity to time slips in general, even though there are a lot of stories that seem fabricated. The last thing I'll say on this that I wanted to bring up, I didn't get a chance to, which is fine, but, but I'll bring it up really quickly. I've been watching a lot of like TikTok videos and Facebook videos and stuff about like science and technology. Like one of the continuing short videos that pops up in my feed is from like one of my heroes, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and also different scientists that he, that he talks with or whatever. But they did this one discussion recently with this guy named James, James Gates Jr. And he is an older gentleman. I think he was the head of, what was it like? Uh, I don't want to say Cambridge. Uh, no, it wasn't Cambridge. Some some Ivy League or or near Ivy League university. Very very well respected professor. And he was saying how in 2010, I didn't know this until recently. In 2010, this guy James Gates Jr. said that he was doing a study on string theory and the equations of string theory, and he decided to put them into a visual representation that he can assess all the equations that existed and and what we think is the answer. To like what they what the answer what he thought the answers would be, and it turns out what he discovered was what looked like when he looked very deeply, it looked like a very supersymmetry kind of setup code that resembled what we would see in computer systems today. And the crazy thing about that is the argument is it's very possible based off of that information that he discovered that we could be living in a computer simulation. So I can't wait. Like maybe we, we should totally do it. We should totally do a podcast on this in the future, but like more deeply. But what I'm thinking here is if the universe is fabricated and it is based off of some kind of code or it's within some kind of system that is running us as, you know, whatever program or whatever, then it is absolutely possible that we could have all of these crazy shit things going on with cryptids and time slips and all that stuff could exist simultaneously if someone were fabricating and altering and injecting code to make that happen in our universe. And because what this guy found, a, you know, a possible hint that that could be true, then I would say that it's totally possible that even though we have shit examples from a lot of people, that everything we've ever talked about, including the time slips, are well within the realm of possible. And that scares me more than anything I could possibly imagine is being the, like thinking that I am in a super, supercomputer and all my free will is completely just, it, it's, it's not real. <laughs> I don't know, man. Does that sound terrifying or what? That is absolutely terrifying. And it makes me think that we're programmed to be certain ways yeah. or are we miniature AIs within the coding? We may never know. And then we popped out of existence. Thanks for tuning into today's episode of The Wandering Road. You can find us on Apple, Google, Spotify, and most podcast platforms. Be sure to subscribe and share. Also, don't forget to give a follow on Instagram at TW Road Podcast and follow my TikTok at TWR Podcast. Take care and I'll catch you on the next one.